Okay, so um, yeah, so my name's uh, Marit Romanish and I work as one of the collections curators at the National Football Museum. Uh, and under the theme of contemporary collecting power uh, and other representation, um, my papers on contemporary collecting through community engagement. Um, so I suppose to start, you know, traditionally uh, what to collect in museums, those decisions have been made by curators and other museum staff. And I think as Ellie said, um, has alluded to that, you know, it's, it's an incredibly powerful position to be in. Um, it's an amazing position to be in, um, that you're helping to record and shape how, you know, history is seen in, in years to come. Um, and obviously people in those positions have massive expertise and passion. Um, and I think what I've decided to sort of hone my own kind of practice and, and work down is, is to still still champion that work as individuals in the sector, but look at working in partnership and in collaboration with groups. So with, with that community uh, engagement um, angle on projects to invite people to help us make those decisions and shape those decisions and, and widen that like awareness of, of, you know, what projects we're looking at. Um, again, I think just, just going back to one of those slides, I saw, you know, not making assumptions on what people, um, you know, want to work on, et cetera, and, and ultimately provide a platform for people whose voices are often not represented or haven't been represented in museums. And ultimately for me, I think, which is why I think I still work in the sector is, is it's, it's my passion for equality really, which is why I, you know, I, I still want to work in the sector and still want to work on these projects. Um, so very, very briefly, uh, just to set the scene a little bit, um, I, so I've been working in museums for 20 years now. Uh, I did work at Leeds museums and galleries for 15 years. Um, and I just wanted to highlight two very brief, uh, briefly two projects that I worked on that has informed I guess, you know, my practice and working with people uh, now at the Football Museum. Um, one of them was hip hop culture. Uh, as you can see, it was work that spanned over years and years. It started off with a conversation with a community activist, Lee Arnold, to put an event on. And that literally developed into a case display with collecting, another case display with collecting further events where the people I'm working with, Lee's contacts are shaping those things. Um, we signed a collecting, co uh, contemporary collecting, sorry, partnership, uh, so that there is um, like a commitment as well from the museum to continue this work. Obviously, since now I've left, and there's actually a large scale exhibition now um, in, at the City Museum. I'd left before that that was installed. But again, you know, it's, it's that kind of long build up um, commitment to community engagement that has ultimately uh, helped change the, the service and, and what's in the collection. Uh, and then secondly, uh, LGBTIQ uh, work uh, that I'd done uh, on various projects um, started off with me supporting a project uh, with a colleague, Jude Woods, who was amazing to uh, learn under. And then that project finished, but then I'd made contacts with other people. They came back to me uh, to work on like a Leeds Queer Film Fest event. And then we collected through that uh, further displays. Um, a HLF project was born out of that West Yorkshire Queer Stories. Uh, and with myself and the museum supported about 300 objects coming into the collection, which literally transformed you know, a rep you know, representation of the community there. Um, we had our first trans leads awareness event. And, and that again was born, I think, from, from trust as well, um, you know, seeing the work that we were doing with West Yorkshire Quiz Stories. So there was that kind of, I guess, like cascade of, um, of people coming to the service and, and, and seeing us as a, as a, you know, as a, as a worthy resource and, and place. Um, so uh, obviously I'm trying to keep things tight because we haven't, uh, haven't got too long. Um, so uh, so the f I've got sort of three main things to highlight. So Women's Super, Women's Super League, um, uh, contemporary collecting that I've been doing. Uh, this was part of work for a large scale exhibition, Crossing the Line, History of Women's Football. 
Um, so what I wanted to do was to, again, talking about power and sharing, was to work with the clubs and the players so that they help shape and decide what we're going to put in the display, but also look to collect for the permanent collections and ultimately raise the profile of the women's game at the museum, which is one of the, you know, big things on, on our agenda as a service is, is that it's a, a huge priority. So um, my methodology was to approach the club, tell them about uh, the project and then ask them if they could then go to the players, see if anybody would be interested in taking part in the project, which was to uh, speak to a player, interview them about their experiences in the game right now while there's that rapid growth. Um, you know, the, the profile of, of the women's game is getting bigger and bigger, I think week by week, year by year. Um, ask them to possibly donate an object which they feel, you know, represents them, represents the game, this moment in time. Um, and that that would go in the exhibition and go into the, the permanent collection. So uh, we interviewed uh, Kim Little at Arsenal, who donated a shirt, which was from a record-breaking crowd game. So obviously the, cr the crowd records keep getting broken month by month. Uh, but this was one uh, that broke the crowd uh, at a game against Tottenham um, at the Emirates. Uh, Kira Walsh, um, donated um, her shirt from a League Cup final, City beat Chelsea 3-1. And again, you know, th these are objects that the football players themselves have chosen to give give to the museum so that they're represented. Um, and then uh, at Arsenal, um, there was two players which they came up with. So Jesse Fleming and Erin uh, Erin Cuthbert. Uh, Jesse Fleming donated her Champions League shirt from that season and Erin Cuthbert donated a pair of her football boots that she last wore in an FA Cup final win. And ultimately these objects all appeared as part of a section in the Crossing the Line exhibition. And, you know, as I explained to the club and the players that, you know, you've, you're helping to curate this exhibition with us, basically shaping how the players are represented, you know, what events we are representing and ultimately showcasing, you know, a, a snapshot in time of, of, of where the women's game is today. Um, and I wanted to really like build on this, I suppose, from um, both as part as priorities for the museum service, but also myself in terms of my own passion for equality. Um, so I built a strong relationship with Manchester City. So that kind of, you know, community engagement, I would say, with a with a small C, really, in that, you know, I was basically building relationships with that club, but also then with the players, that level of trust, that community of players that are out there. So Steph Horton uh, agreed to speak to us again, same methodology, interviewing them, capturing that moment in time. And Steph donated uh, a really important object, actually, her shirt from her 150th WSL cap, uh, which is a huge testament to her longevity in the game. Uh, also, Demi Stokes um, donated a pair of boots uh, that were gifted uh, as a Euros uh, winner in uh, 2022. And then lastly, in terms of, you know, things that can be tricky. Um, so we, in that project, managed to represent Arsenal, Chelsea and City, who are three of the leading teams in the WSL. It was harder to actually get in touch with Manchester United and, and, and get that kind of player engagement to be able to like capture their, you know, capture players' voices and put those women front and centre of this. Um, but what I did manage to do was to at least get some sort of object donations chose by the players. So Alessia Russo, who now plays for Arsenal, um, and uh, Mary Earps, who I think many people will, will know of. Um, so, you know, it, it wasn't, in terms of my own methodology, it's not exactly how I wanted things to go, but but ultimately it was a it was a start with the club, and it gave birth then to a permanent display on the galleries, uh, which showcases all of the items that have been donated by clubs, chose by players, and 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 some of their stories, um, and again in terms of you know 
what, what I have to work with on the galleries, I couldn't actually get some of the films out. But what I did was made sure that there was images of those players to put women front and center um, and to put the backs of the shirts facing the viewers. So again, you know, the clubs get the coverage, but ultimately this is achievements by, you know, those women on the field that are, uh, you know, grafting away and, 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 and forming their own histories. And again, in terms of, you know, that to me, going back to my work at Leeds is, is it's, it's those breadcrumbs that keep, you know, further development, further development. Um, so the FA uh, got in contact with me then to look at um, sort of wider collaboration in terms of uh, contemporary collecting. Uh, so we've just uh, begun this collaboration, working with them, the WSL and our, well, ourselves uh, to have a commitment to, again, kind of that methodology I spoke about uh, throughout the season to be working on events, um, you know, with them to collect with players, speak to players, capture their memories, their experiences of their game. So really, really exciting time and we're very lucky. Um, Karen Bardsley came, shared shared some of her story experiences and um, launched the event for us. Um, and these were some of the uh, uh, latest acquisitions that came in. Um, so Ashley Neville, shirt sure, from Spurs, Katie Robinson uh, at Brighton and uh, Frank Kirby uh, from Chelsea. Um, and just to move on then to uh, LGBTIQ plus in, uh, community engagement uh, for the service at the, um, at the football museum. So again, going back to crossing the line, uh, this the exhibition um, on, the on the story of women's football. Um, I got in touch with uh, Manchester Laces in terms of you know, whether they'd be interested in being part of the exhibition and also uh, whether they'd be interested in um, you know, donating objects into the collection. Again, following that methodology of, of coming to interview them and them speak about the object, but also about their experiences. And um, I suppose to, uh, a, bit of, uh, a bit of context about Man Manchester Laces is uh, Manchester Laces uh, is a, uh, so it's, it's an all-inclusive club. So it's uh, inclusive to uh, the trans and non-binary community. So they're very much paving the way in the Northwest in terms of inclusive football. Um, so again, same methodology, uh, same sense of ownership. You can see Helen there stood next to uh, one of the uh, shirts that, so Helen is the, I should say, the, the founder of Manchester Laces. Um, and the, we, we interviewed a few people, but this was another person, Sarah, and uh, she donated uh, her shirt there. You can see LL Cool Jones uh, from the team. And ultimately, again, were, <clears throat> you know, it was material to go into the permanent collections for the future, but ultimately part of our uh, current program in terms of, uh, you know, ex current exhibitions. And then these have also found their way onto, um, permanent galleries as well they're both not on right now but but they have been as well so there's that i think commitment as well from the service that this is not just um you know a, a, a sort of a collection of items which comes in and then is in the store um and then again i think going back to i suppose what i was saying about you know people hear about the work that i think the service is doing and then uh, manchester city um uh, part of their sort of inclusive program, the community program, they then got in touch with with me about donating a Pride Progress flag. Um, and again, I said, okay, well, you know, yeah, we, we, we could do this, but would you be interested in, you know, coming to speak to us about this? You know, why, why do you want to donate this to us? Tell us a bit about it. Um, and so the flag was flown at the stadium, um, during Pride Month uh, in 2021, uh, it was signed by the team, um, and then ultimately we went down uh, to the uh, to the club for an event, and yeah, captured a conversation with uh, it was like four different people from sort of various strands of the club, but making sure that again, you know, we put those people's voices front and center of this, so that ultimately, you know, on on these collections uh, on your 
uh, you know, your object records and things like that. These, these voices are there so that, that those films are, are attached to them. And really importantly, again, uh, I think following on from and hearing about the work that we're doing, uh, Lucy Clark, who's recognized as the first, uh, the world's first transgender referee, Lucy got in contact and said that uh, she'd like to come down, speak to us, donate some items um, about her coming out, um, that first game uh, that she refed and also her work um, around uh, Truck UK, so the first trans in, um, f full, uh, f first trans uh, team in the country. Uh, so again, you know, using the same methodology, making sure that we, we capture, you know, imagery, uh, sounds, uh, you know, these people's opinions, basically, uh, and especially, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of groundbreaking uh, moments in time. Um, then, uh, so just a ball game, uh, which is uh, an LGBT uh, plus uh, like activist group. They do a lot in terms of raising awareness, uh, looking to make the game safe for, for, for everybody to attend. Um, they, uh, they've got this England flag, which they've taken around to like England games and that's, they want to donate that into the collection. They go around uh, the country getting fans and things to, to sign it in terms of, um, you know, that commitment to the women's game, um, capturing people's messages to send to the players. And really excitingly, uh, we asked them to be curators for us at the Women's uh, World Cup because they were going out there. And Lindsay, who's great, I said to Lindsay, well, you know, when you're out there, you know, what's in the fan parks and things, uh, you know, you you go out there see what you think you know you you go to the the england game the england women's games you know week in well month 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 in month out sort of thing so um so yeah they they created this uh, time capsule uh so to speak and we're going to be interviewing them again to support this about their experiences uh, there and um to finish off in terms of uh, the showcase, a really important project is uh, a Black English Football History. That is a working title project and exhibition, which we began um, last month. And I've actually got my uh, next uh, big group meeting about this uh, tomorrow. Um, and ultimately, um, this exhibition has an idea behind this as, as, as project has come around as before I came, uh, some colleagues were working on, you know, areas that um, needed work in the collection, underrepresentation, and this was an area which was which was addressed. And it was all actually pre-COVID, but obviously with, with COVID and lockdown happening, things, um, you know, I guess to a certain extent, museums came to a halt. Um, but as I came to the service about a year and a half ago, I got speaking to my colleague Alex and uh, the work that Alex had done on this, I said, look, this is definitely a community engagement project that I think we can make happen. You know, let's let's go and speak to some people, you know, see what the lay of the land is, see what people's response is. Uh, so did that important work, uh, making sure that, uh, you know, this was the right thing to do. And, um, you know, spoke to people like Leon Mann from the Blacklist, really important figure in football and you know, other people as well. And the response was just, yeah, really positive and want, they wanted to be part and, and make this happen. So um, just, uh, I'll come back to that in terms of the, the group and people we're working with, but just to highlight, so some of the uh, contemporary collecting that we'd we just begun uh, in terms of, you know, that I think it's that service commitment to this as well, as well as working with with communities. And again, throw, following that methodology that I've uh, brought in, in terms of working with WSL clubs and um, women in the game. Uh, again, you know, went out to clubs, asked, you know, told them about this project that we're embarking on and would players be interested in donating objects, being interviewed, sharing their thoughts and also maybe what they would like to see in this uh, exhibition and project. Um, just a couple of players to highlight. Uh, so Bobby Deckard over Reed, who plays for Fulham, um, got a, you know, made a really good relationship with Fulham. We were invited down to the ground. Bobby shared some of his thoughts on camera, um, got some great comments about what he would like to see in this project as well. 
and he donated his Jamaica shirt uh, from a, a Gold Cup match in 2021. Um, Ma'am, we may um, need to ask you, we may need to ask you to draw to a close. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, I, I've only got I've only got two more. That's it. Questions. Okay. Um, now, please. Yep. Yeah, okay. So so basically, uh, Ben uh, with a player Ben Johnson as well, uh, very uh, similar in terms of collecting Alex Iwobi. And then just to say that, yeah, so there is 13 people sat on this uh, co-curation group and um, we're going to be meeting for once a month uh, over two years and they are basically going to be shaping uh, the exhibition and the, 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 the project. So both through contemporary collecting and, and, and everything wider, really. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much.